Hey Lauren, how did reducing your meds too quickly go? So some background context for what's been happening. Some of you may know I've been trying to reduce my medications. This is stemming from, you know, partly, you know, it's kind of hard to actually weed out between delusional thinking around medications where I believe that the medications are, you know, poisoning me or whatnot, and weeding that concept and that mentality out from well, there's a lot of evidence out there that, you know, antipsychotic medication and psychiatric medication in general are not great for you long term, or, you know, the long term effects are not really well known. I think there's some healthy skepticism going on around my medications and, you know, wanting to reduce them and whatnot, and maybe ideally at some point go off of them. But then it's kind of hard to kind of weed that out from a delusion that I particularly hold around medications being poisonous. I think that kind of wove itself into maybe why I reduced too quickly. But basically, I have been trying to reduce my medication working with my psychiatrist. The idea, I guess, was to reduce very, very slowly, but I think I ended up getting a little bit carried away with it and reduced too quickly. Part of why this happened is because things were going really well at first and I was gradually reducing, you know, half a pill of different medications that I'm on every couple weeks or every few weeks, and that seemed to be going okay. You know, I was feeling good, I was doing well, but two, two and a half weeks ago, I started to experience more symptoms. And what I mean by this is I started having more hallucinations, and I started having more paranoia, and um, I, it was hard to keep up with my thoughts and they were getting really muddled and it was hard to maintain a fluent thought process or, you know, I was just feeling really muddled and very confused. My symptoms were getting harder to deal with and harder to manage. I was also experiencing some other, you know, potential warning signs like one of my warning signs is shopping. And so I started online shopping again and I started just exhibiting behaviors that were kind of elusive in nature, which is one of my primary warning signs that things aren't going very well. And so I was kind of ignoring some of these warning signs or maybe just being blissfully ignorant of them, thinking that, you know, things were still going really well and that I could just continue with the rate of reduction that I was doing in terms of reducing my medication. However, the symptoms started getting really, really bad about a week ago. I think it's important to mention as well that we were going through some stressors in life. You know, my family got COVID about a month ago and that was a really, really stressful thing for us all to go through. And so perhaps that in conjunction with just the stress that goes along with reducing medications, you know, kind of maybe led to an exacerbated, an exacerbasement. Is that a word? I don't know, whatever. But it led to the exacerbation of my symptoms. So things were getting a little rough with symptoms and whatnot. And then this past weekend, um, I also had a bit of relationship conflict. So Rob and I were, you know, fighting about this or that or whatever, but I think that also kind of exacerbated the symptoms that I was experiencing and the hallucinations that I was experiencing and, you know, some of the delusional thought that I was falling into started having a really negative you know, nature to it. And I started getting hallucinations that were really negative in nature, kind of around the relationship conflict. Anyway, it began to be very difficult to manage them. And so Friday night, so after my psychiatrist's office was closed for the week, um, it got to a point where I felt that I really needed help and guidance in terms of figuring out what to do with my medication, because I had kind of identified at that point that medication was kind of where the root issue was. And so my psychiatrist had actually instructed me to call a mobile crisis team if ever this, you know, problems came up like this when it was after his hours. And so I made the decision to reach out for support to a mobile crisis team. I think they're called something else now and they're no longer kind of as mobile, but they're a crisis response team that was available at that time of day. I called them and, um, a bit of back and forth. They were at first hesitant to kind of offer any kind of guidance around medication because they didn't want to step on my my treating psychiatrist's toes, I guess, around medication. But they ended up booking me for a um, kind of emergency 
session with one of their psychiatrists for the Sunday. It felt like I couldn't really wait that long. And so I made the decision to just increase um, my antipsychotic that I was on a little bit Friday night. And by the time Sunday morning rolled around, I was feeling like I was a lot more stable and kind of able to handle things. And so I decided to cancel the emergency appointment with the other psychiatrist and just call my my own psychiatrist Monday morning. Called my psychiatrist's office and left a message saying that I needed to speak with him as soon as possible. Um, the crisis response team actually followed up with me a couple times, which I was really kind of surprised about. And, you know, it was kind of nice to see that they have that kind of service available to people who are experiencing crisis because, you know, it's hard to navigate that. And so to have that extra support was really good. So where things kind of landed there is that they ended up reaching out to my psychiatrist as well and they were able to talk and they let me know in a follow-up conversation that uh, my psychiatrist is going to be calling me on Thursday to kind of check in and go over everything that happened. Um, but he suggested to them that I be a part of their stabilization team, I think is what it's called. And so they're going to continue checking in with me until my psychiatrist can check in and kind of figure out what's going on. So that's kind of where things are at. But also on over the weekend, I reached out to my therapist to see if she could fit me in in terms of having a cancellation sometime this week. And she did fit me in this morning. And so those are kind of all the steps that I took to address kind of the crisis situation that I was in. And that's kind of where things are at right now. So what I really want to convey is actually, you know, partly what I talked to my therapist about this morning. And that was kind of around the idea of, she pointed out that I'm experiencing a bit of a disconnect between how I'm choosing to frame seeing the medication increase that I inevitably had to do this weekend and what my feelings are around that. And I've kind of dissociated a little bit in terms of trying not to fall into the feelings that I have, which are around, you know, a sense of loss and a sense of failure in terms of having to go back up on medications. And I think that that was a really important insight in terms of understanding that I need to kind of reframe how I'm seeing that event and seeing it less as a failure and more as a tool or kind of more information for how to go about it again. Understanding that my ultimate goal of trying to reduce medication and seeing how that works for my mind and my body and whatnot is still, you know, a, a possible goal to have and it's still the goal that I hold. But understanding now that I have more information in terms of how to go about it now again. I think that some things that I learned were basically that it's kind of an ebb and a flow process. It's not like because it was going so well to begin with that it's always going to be that way. I think you kind of always have to take into account stressors in your life or how your body is responding to different reductions in the medication or, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I think you always need to be kind of reacting and taking into account what your body is telling you. So there were some warning signs that I detailed at the beginning of this video that my body was kind of telling me like, hey, we need to slow down. You know, this is not, this is not going the best it can be anymore. And I should have been more open to listening to that and understanding that it's okay to not follow a strict, you know, regimen of d reduction in terms of reducing meds. And it's okay to kind of be more in tune with what my body's telling me and go with the flow a little bit more in terms of, you know, listening to my body in terms of what is appropriate reduction. And then again, also being okay if I do need to increase and being okay with that and not seeing that as a failure or a sense of loss. I think I also learned from this experience that I need to be more aware of the stressors that are going on in my life. So, you know, my baby started daycare and then we all got hit with COVID and that was really difficult to manage. You know, we're still dealing with symptoms and it's been hard to work through that. And so understanding that other stressors in life are going to have an impact on how I'm experiencing symptoms and whatnot too. Factoring that in, I guess, to my medication regimen is important as well. Another thing that came up in therapy is around my relationship with my psychiatrist. So, you know, I'm always telling people that I'm working very closely with my psychiatrist in terms of navigating this reduction. But I think something that I kind of became aware of talking with my therapist this morning was that I haven't had 
the most open communication with my therapist, with my psychiatrist. I think, you know, and you know, I'm grateful for this, that he's kind of taken the approach of following my lead in terms of having this goal of medication reduction and figuring out when to reduce and how much to reduce and whatnot. He's kind of been following my lead on that. And so in an effort to not lose that, that sense of trust, I've kind of just been spewing what I think he wants to hear. So saying, yeah, it's going really great. I'm doing really well. Maybe sharing that I'm having more symptoms, but saying that I am managing them, no problem. Since COVID happened, all of our appointments have been over the phone. And so they've just been quick five minute, just kind of rushing through everything appointments. And ultimately that is harming me. And so, you know, going into my appointment on Thursday with him or when he calls me on Thursday, I'm going to try to be more mindful of this and really be more honest about not only what I'm experiencing in terms of increased symptoms and how the medication reduction is affecting me, but being more honest and hopefully transparent about what my ultimate goals are and hopefully trying to get on the same page a little bit more around that. So I highly doubt this is going to be the last you hear from me in terms of my journey around reducing medications, but hopefully this is going to be the last time where I am coming from a place of kind of blissful ignorance in terms of how it's going. And hopefully I will be able to have a more realistic understanding about how to navigate it. Understanding that I absolutely need to keep people like my psychiatrist and my therapist in the loop and work more collaboratively with them. I don't want anyone to see this video and be like, oh, Lauren's going off medication, so I'm gonna do that too. That's absolutely not what I am trying to advocate with this video. Maybe more like healthy skepticism around it, but more so, I guess, if you have any you know, skepticism or thoughts around that, around anything like medication, trying to be open with communicating about them with your medical care team, I think is really, really important. And finding a medical care team that really cares about your goals and what you want and what you want to work toward and kind of helping you to work towards that. So thanks for watching this little catch up video on my journey of reducing my medication. This last week was really, really hard and I very much hope that none of you guys find yourself in this sort of situation as well because it wasn't good and I learned that I don't ever want to find myself in this kind of situation again where I am in crisis and unable to handle symptoms. I hope that sharing what I learned from this experience is helpful in some way. If you guys have any other tips for navigating this kind of situation, I would love to hear from you in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and as always, wishing you and your loved ones good health. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.